Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. We're just going through the uh, array of uh, new evidence material coming in on the Iranian dossier, the planned U.S. attack on Iran. So Edward J. Epstein arguing in the Wall Street Journal of today, Friday, July 30th, 2010, goes through this thing that somehow through a mistake in transmission, the uh, Iranians were alerted to all the CIA agents that were in Iran. These were all tracked down. They were either liquidated or turned. They became double agents. They began feeding disinformation. And all that disinformation starting in 2004 was the basis of the terrible mistake perpetrated in December 2007 with the National Intelligence Estimate saying there is no Iranian nuclear program. And then we get to a very interesting one. Amiri, Shamram Amiri, uh, the uh, guy who went back to Iran now after having been in Tucson, Arizona, and putting those things on the, uh, the videos on the YouTube Internet site. Uh, he defected to the United States, redefected back to Iran last month. He reportedly provided details about the termination of the Iranian nuclear program, Project 111, that presumably dovetailed with other information that the U.S. was getting from the CIA's compromised network. Iran now claims that Mr. Amiri was a double agent all along. So this is what I predicted in that paper, that watch, watch what they'll do. They'll say, aha, Amiri went back. He was a double agent all along. He, re he lied to us. Therefore, we're going to revise that uh, NIE. Isn't that amazing? You basically, uh, it's all deja vu, as Yogi Berra said, deja vu all over again. Uh, you're getting the neocons coming back with a new Team B, which is that alternate group to review the NIE process. We're getting the cakewalk again. Don't worry about Iran. They're a paper tiger. We're getting curveball, curveball Amiri with various variations. We're going to have very soon the Office of Special Plans, some new unit set up by the neocons somewhere to, uh, to begin agitating. Well, it may be WikiLeaks. Uh, if we look at the WikiLeaks document dump, and if we look at the strange uh, figure of Julian Assange, this bloodless, emotionless, uh, psychologically very uh, unusual specimen that's paraded now in the world media with a big attempt to build him up as a, an anti-authoritarian culture hero for this uh, uh, horrendous cybernetic world of alienated youth, uh, the underlying map is this. The basic thesis that comes out of uh, a kind of a review of all of the material written about this and what, what I know so far that's in it, the main lessons of the WikiLeaks are Pakistan is bad. Pakistan is your deadly enemy. You've got to do something about Pakistan. Second only to Pakistan as a, daily, a deadly enemy is Iran. Both of these countries are in Afghanistan, they're betraying the U.S., they're killing the U.S. forces, they're making victory impossible. This is absolutely intolerable. This has to come to an end. And then, of course, the war in Afghanistan is a failure. Therefore, the unspoken but implied thesis of the WikiLeaks document dump is that it's time to end the war in Afghanistan and transfer the war to Pakistan and or Iran. Now, this is the lift and shift. Um, this is therefore a very sinister operation. We see that the, the one constant from the Pentagon Papers in 1971 to the uh, situation today is the stubborn stupidity of the left liberals, their gullibility, their hysteria, their herd instinct, their in, inability to look at, uh, at the way things actually work. No uh, cognizione per causas. They just can't understand things by their causes. Now, I mentioned uh, Edward J., Epstein, and uh, you can see what he wants here. Uh, this is the neocons. He says, in 2007, uh, the U.S. Uh, got, this, uh, got this all wrong, and the idea is that the, the reason that Iran has such a dangerous program is that they got it from Pakistan. So Pakistan gets into the act directly with Iran. This is the AQ Khan network, and we had people in the 9-11 Truth Movement who would use 9-11 Truth Meetings to come out and parade speeches attacking Pakistan and AQ Khan as the main danger in the world. And it always appeared to me at the time that this was the voice of disinformation and uh, essentially operatives who were 
parading this this idea that uh, it broke out, for example, at the uh, the conference that was held in Manhattan Center on the fifth. I'm sorry, the uh, yeah the four, the third fourth anniversary in 2005, I believe. There was a debate about this between me and some spooks from the intelligence community. But you you get uh, the idea. Uh, one variation would be end Afghanistan, attack Iran, and foment civil war in Pakistan through indirect means. That I would say that might be that might be Biden at this point. Or end Afghanistan, play Pakistan against Iran. Now that's that's a very interesting one. That would be Brzezinski, I would guess. Another one would be end Afghanistan, bomb Iran and Pakistan, and that seems to be where Epstein and most of the neocons will come down, because they are, of course, one-trick ponies. Let's now look into this uh, stuff. Uh, Epstein tells us, uh, let's, let's go on now to, uh, to the uh, Wiki, WikiLeaks department. Okay, what do we have? Uh, all these tens of thousands of documents, what are they? This is low-level cable traffic. This is either official use only or confidential or at most secret. And if it's secret, it's probably over-classified. There's nothing top secret, nothing with code words, nothing cosmic, nothing NATO, nothing no foreign. There's none of the top-level stuff. It's essentially the, the plotting uh, details of, of, of massacre and, uh, and genocide. Notice how it's put out with the New York Times the London Guardian, and Der Spiegel of Hamburg, Germany. Now, anybody who knows anything about 9-11 truth knows that when you have a thesis that the government, the financier establishment, uh, does not want to get out in public, you don't get it in the New York Times. They do not cooperate with you. They do not publish their own version of the broad data that you have. New York Times, Guardian, Spiegel come into the picture when it's something that this transatlantic U.S.-British intelligence community wants. The New York Times, the organ of the financial community and of the uh, U.S. intelligence community to a large degree. Guardian, the left wing of MI6. Spiegel, interesting uh, question. The house organ of the British occupation zone in Germany uh, after 1945 with Rudolf Augstein. They had a cover story four or five years ago. Conspiracy fanatics turn the world on its head. This was against uh, Gerhard Wisniewski. Uh, Andreas von Bülow, Matthias Bruckers, the three main 9-11 truth authors in Germany. So that's how they treat things that the regime does not want. But in this case, they're delighted to, uh, to put it in. The Guardian is clearest. Their two principal articles explaining what's in the WikiLeaks are, first of all, Pakistan betrays the U.S. Secondly, Iran, in another article, has uh, this huge presence in the part of Afghanistan along their border. Uh, the WikiLeaks is not an anti-war organization. Uh, we have quotes from Assange where he says, we have no view, WikiLeaks as such has no view about whether there should be a uh, war going on or not. But uh, we just want the war to be humane. If it is going on, it's got to be humane. Notice there's also no, there's no idea content in this. There's no analysis. There's nothing about imperialism or world domination, the role of the banks. There's not even the cruder terminology about, say, a new world order. That would be a step up for somebody like Assange. He just doesn't, doesn't have it. So uh, the stuff has all been edited. It's highly selected, highly uh, slanted in the ideas that are uh, in it. Uh, we've got Osama bin Laden is treated as a real person in this stuff. Osama bin Laden attending the Quetta Shura. So, uh, looks like it's supporting the 9-11 myth, and explicitly that is what Assange does. Or, Assange hates 9-11 truth. He finds it annoying. We'll be back in a minute.